Okay, so we're now recording. Uh, welcome everybody to this session on life sciences. We're very lucky to have Filippo here who will be um, going through the presentation. And just to also advise, we have a live chat as well. And Sarah's here who will be able to answer any questions you have in chat um, and anything that may need a bit more explanation, uh, we'll then open it up to Filippo to answer. Okay. Okay, so I will start. The, let's share my screen. Um, hopefully, you can see my slides. Great. Let's yes. Present it. Yeah. There. Okay, so I, I'm going to try to give you an overview of what are the different degrees in life science today, um, starting from my uh, own career path. And um, and then show you some some quite clear example and, and ending with some career opportunities doing life science. I put this um, QR code here uh, in case you want to see more information uh, about some of the things I'm talking about today. So, uh, like many of you, I I ended up I finished my uh, high school uh, and I was like, yeah, I like science. I like um, to. I, I did study quite a lot of science in high school. I'd say I want to study more. I want to specialize. I want to become a scientist. I didn't quite have a clear idea of what I wanted to do for the rest of my life, but I knew that science was um, was the thing for me. So um, and 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 I decided to study biological science, and that was a three year degree. Uh, actually, when I started, it was a five year degree. Then they changed it halfway through. But, uh, the, the, the main point is that it was a three year degree, so I did a bachelor in biological sciences and then I specialized in molecular and cellular biology during my master, which was a two year degree. And then I did a PhD in biochemistry because the, the, my real passion was uh, actually biochemistry, something I always liked since high school, and that was a four year degree. Um, the, 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 one of the things I wanted to, to highlight here is that um, most of the information I'm going to provide you today are relative to the UK system. And UK universities are quite standardized, so the system in UK works relatively similar. It's, it's quite similar in all UK. However, it's quite different as soon as you go out of UK. So uh, Italy, where I studied, but Europe in general, uh, especially if I think about uh, larger countries like um, Spain, France, uh, Germany, Italy, Austria, they have a quite different university system from UK, um, uh, but they are quite similar with each other. Uh, so most of the information I will provide you today are about UK, but if you have any question about studying Europe, I'm happy to answer a question about that because I did study in, uh, in, in Italy. Um, in many countries, um, the option to have very specialistic degrees straight away from the bachelor level, it's not quite common. Um, but that is, is actually uh, quite different in UK, and I'm going to talk about that quite a lot in my, in my talk. So um, just to summarize, I did my bachelor and master degree at the University of Siena, which is in Italy, which one of the oldest universities in the world. Um, probably still um, old building, quite fascinating. And then I started my PhD and, um, and that was uh, via connection of my supervisor, my master project supervisor, uh, Siena, I found my PhD supervisor in London at the Medical Institute for Medi uh, the National Institute for Medical Research. Now this building was on top of Mill Hill. Uh, I say it was because it's been demolished, it's not there anymore. Now, this institute has been moved about five or six years ago uh, behind um, some pancreas. So the, this is the, the new Crick Institute, uh, which shouldn't be too far from where your school is. Uh, it's quite a nice, fancy building now. It, you can see it's literally behind some pancreas. So I did my PhD there um, and I studied biochemistry. And after that, I did a postdoc. So a postdoc is a period of research in which you are uh, an experienced researcher, but not quite independent enough to get your own uh, research project. So you're working under the supervision of an experienced scientist. And I worked at Imperial College for about five years. After that, I thought, okay, I 
gained a good level of experience. I have my own ideas. I like my own project. I think I can pursue um, a different career in research. So I decided to move to University of Essex, where I'm now leading a research team on the study of basic understanding of cancer formation and progression and development of new cancer uh, treatment. And in parallel to that, I'm an academic, and academics means that at the same time you are teaching, uh, supervising students, but also carrying out research. These, these two components of being an academic. This path is quite similar, so if you want to study science and go in, in industry, that doesn't change quite much. There may be different steps, but overall the path is quite the same. So when you think about life sciences or science in general, science is classically divided in three branches. The social and behavioral sciences, these are subjects like classic social science, political science, criminology. Uh, then you've got the physical sciences. These are uh, math, uh, physics, chemistry, uh, computer science. And then you've got life science. Life science is quite broad and quite general. It, it is sometimes a bit confusing because there are sometimes you see that life science and biology are used as, uh, as the same thing. They are not quite the same thing, in my opinion. Life science is a big umbrella that includes everything which is alive in this planet and the study of life. So life science is a big umbrella. Biology is a part of life science. So when you want to study a degree or want to want to specialize on something within life science, there's lots of different options. And all these often options translate in lots of different degrees that you can do in your uh, yeah, university. Uh, these are biochemistry and bioinformatics, um, uh, biomedical science, bo botany ecology, genetics, immunology, marine biology, microbiology, neuroscience, human biology, sometimes also referred as uh, physiology and zoology. Now, biomedical science, immunology, and microbiology are the so-called uh, subject aligned to medicine. Um, they're quite different because, especially in UK, they tend to have an NHS-oriented um, uh, uh, degrees. Uh, they tend to be accredited by um, NHS-linked accreditation bodies. So they, they work slightly different, but overall it's, it is connected to the, um, the study of um, uh, biology related to uh, medicine and diseases. Bioinformatics is a bit of, a, of in between uh, computer science and biology, and often you have a strong component of bioinformatics in biochemistry and genetics. So you don't need to do a degree in bioinformatics to become a bioinformatician, so you can study biochemistry and genetics and still do that career path. So there is a strong component of this. So now what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to try to show you what you study and what are the different components of this degree. And I'm going to take uh, the University of Essex as an example because it's where I work. But many of the information I'm going to provide you, especially as a structure, they apply for pretty much um, every university in the UK. But I'm going to try to be quite specific when it comes to unique feature of University of Essex. So first of all, why do um, why um, I'm going to talk about University of Essex? Why do, do I decide to work in University of Essex? University of Essex is a quite vibrant environment. So I, I thought it was um, I, I, when I when I tried to look for a job and I was looking at University of Essex, I got I got quite interested about from University for lots of different features. Uh, definitely the research quality is a research intensive university. And this is quite a, a, an important feature when you study life science. It may not be as important in other discipline, but definitely life science is something, uh, is something vital. Um, being a research intensive university, that means that every lecture you, within the university that is teaching you at the same time, 50% of his time or that time, they are uh, involved in real research in a lab. So they manage a research lab and a research project. Now that actually is important because uh, on several levels during your learning, because information from their own research get, in, get uh, is, is, uh, is present also during the lecture. So very often we bring in the lecture real example that comes from our own research in the lab. But not only, because once you are uh, doing a life science, there is a strong component of developing skills in life sciences. And these skills are developed under the direct supervision of lecture. 
And clearly, you have a different level of supervision if those lectures are actually um, on, on a daily basis involved in real research in life science. And they are actively publishing new knowledge, new scientific knowledge in a peer reviewed scientific paper. So that was one of the things that I found more in, most interesting within Essex, which clearly is the reason why I work there. Uh, also, the uh, University of Essex. Essex is is very important because it has a strong international outlook. What does that mean? University is not just studying a very specific subject, but is also important because you acquire knowledge and a life experience. is is all about broadening your horizons, um, uh, increasing your knowledge and increasing your ability to acquire new knowledges. And being involved, being immersed in an international environment is a, a key aspect of that. So definitely Essex uh, is a very international. I mean, I'm, I'm, I was born in Italy. Uh, I studied in, in, um, in, uh, in, in UK and, in, uh, and abroad. So clearly I'm an example of that situation. University of Essex was, era, was University of, of the Year in 2018 and was awarded the gold TEF. TEF is a teaching excellence framework, is a government exercise to assess the level of the quality of teaching in UK. And Essex uh, got gold in 2017. And in a few years, we're going to have a new, uh, um, a new round of TEF. And I'm pretty sure we're going to get gold again. There are three campuses, but the, all the information I'm going to provide you today are about the campus, uh, the Colchester campus, where life science is based. It's a growing university, and that is another important aspect of university. One university which is keep investing on infrastructure and support to students because it's forward looking, is aiming to grow and increase in size and um, and support. Um, so that's pretty much all I wanted to tell you about these. So the School of Life Science is uh, where, where I work and, um, and uh, it's a very welcoming and I'm not saying that because I work there, but because I have been working in lots of different universities in UK and I, uh, and I have to admit that there, there is a good, it's a good environment. It's very stimulating both for learning and for studying. Um, uh, it's highly interdisciplinary and I'm going to show you in a bit how and why and you will see that how all these different subjects that we teach and we work on uh, interact with each other. Uh, we have a brand new STEM building um, where um, there are uh, facility, computer facilities, um, meeting facilities. There's a beautiful bar with the balcony uh, outdoor space. And uh, in the floor below, there is a brand new teaching lab. Because as I said before, um, a good component of student studying life science is acquiring practical skills in life science. As I say, we are highly involved in real research. And in 2019, we attracted 4.5 million in research income from funding bodies for funding our own research. And so the one the, the most of my talk is going to be based about, uh, it's going to be around these bachelor degrees that, that we have at Essex. So some general information about the structure of degrees at university. So, University degrees classically are three years degrees. Um, these degrees are characterized by different components. Usually you have um, 120 credits um, in every year. This is quite standard in, um, in, in UK. Uh, this is quite important because if you decide to change university uh, during after your first year, the fact that you have these credits allow you to move from one university to other relatively easily. Um, the level of your um, um, modules, the level of the subject you study is growing uh, progressively uh, from year one to year two to year three, and that's quite logic. Um, there are certain components of your degrees which are indispensable for you to acquire in order for you to get a, a university degree at the end of your three years, and that is a, a 330 degrees that you need to pass, and at least 90 degrees at level six. So basically that means that you really need to um, to pass in a um, in a full way all most of the of the courses that you do in your third year, which is probably the most formative um, year that you have within your uh, academic career. Um, there are some some variation to these, and these are growing becoming um, quite popular nowadays. Uh, when I started uh, Essex like six years ago, we had about 10 students that wanted to do it like the four years. And now we've got over 100 students that are opting for these 
four-year option. What, what is the difference between the three-year and the four-year option? So uh, it's pretty much the same. So you do the first year and the second year normally. Then in the third year, instead of doing a year of study, you move into an industrial placement. So you actually work in an industrial setting. You, do a, you can do a year abroad, so you go and study different subjects in a different university, which is a partner university. Um, uh, the degree, the, the subject you study needs to be in English. Uh, that is one of the few. But again, this usually is uh, something that we uh, set up during the partnership. So it's all standardized. And this is mostly related to students that just study biomedical science. They do hospital placement, but all the others tend to do industrial placement. Um, and this is a quite formative uh, experience. After, um, after students do this uh, ER uh, outside of university, they come back and they do exactly the same thing as, uh, the, the, as I showed before here with third year. So the, 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 um, you study the modules on the first year and you do the uh, project, which I'm going to tell you about in a second. Um, these, um, uh, what are these industrial placements? These industrial placements can be quite different, and clearly they are different according to the subject you study. Uh, uh, this can be um, 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 different companies, pharmaceutical companies, but these can also be um, um, uh, Companies like uh, self, uh, Selfridge, um, um, Tesco, um, um, uh, Tesco or Sainsbury. And you would ask how, why I'm studying life science and why would I work in Tesco or, San, or, 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 or Sainsbury? Well, because Tesco and Sainsbury have an entire section of pharmaceuticals, um, drugs and generics. And that actually is quite important because there's a lot of uh, patent checking and a lot of information that are quite tightly linked to what you study as part of degrees like biochemistry or genetics. So uh, it's quite a useful experience because it really gives the students the opportunity to look around to see how life science is actually embedded in lots of different industrial environments. The most classic one we, we, um, are obviously pharmaceutical companies, and we've got lots of different links with uh, companies which are not too far from Essex, Procter & Gamble, Glaxo, which are all AstraZeneca, which are all in the Essex-Cambridge border. Um, and this is quite important because students really mature a lot during the industrial placement. They gain lots of uh, practical experience, job experience. They train a lot in doing an interview and applying for jobs. So it, it's really a formative uh, experience. Um, so um, really, uh, really valuable. There is also another option of a four year uh, degree, and that is with the year zero. Year zero basically is what was before called the foundation year. Uh, Essex, this is called Essex Pathway. Basically, this is um, a, a year that students do when they don't have the uh, requirement to enter directly to year one. Um, uh, so basically, it, it's a preparation, a foundation year in which all the basic information that uh, are missing for, for you to access year one, that get, uh, get, you, you study that, you, you, you get a foundation year degree, and after that you can start a classic three-year um, three degree. Uh, these are um, quite popular uh, with, um, um, with students that don't manage to get the uh, entry requirement for year one, but they are also growing uh, popularity with um, um, mature students, so students, so people that uh, decide to come back to university at a later stage of their life. So how does university work? Now, the setting and the timing of university is quite different from that of high school. So uh, uh, university works in terms. What are terms? So you start um, university usually beginning of October and you study uh, all the autumn term between beginning of October till mid-December. Uh, that is the autumn term. And then again, which is about 10 weeks. And then from the middle of uh, January, you study um, uh, till middle of March, and that is the spring term. In these two uh, terms, you have most of your lectures, 
lost of your uh, practical uh, experience and mo most of your full trip. Everything based connected to studying and training is in these two terms. Then after uh, about end of April, that is the summer term where all the revision classes, all the uh, exams takes place. But sometimes you also have the summer school and the field trip. I'm going to talk extensively about the field trip. Summer schools tend to be um, opportunity for students to gain extra training skills uh, um, um, which are outside the classic teaching uh, term in autumn and spring. Um, teaching methods can be quite different from what, again what you get in high school. Uh, there is a classic frontal lecture which tends to be uh, in a theatre room like these. Um, this is our, this is one of the teaching um, uh, of a larger teaching room uh, Essex. Uh, the, the, the thing is that we tend to be quite interactive with students and we try to use different methods of teaching, which is a combination of frontal lecture, but also a problem based um, ex, uh, problem based activities and group teaching. As I say, you have a lot of practical uh, session. Um, um, there's a lot of a, a laboratory of field trip. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to explain in a second what is the difference between um, field trip and lab sessions. Um, most of the things that you do at university is online. So all the lecture notes, all the material is online. Uh, at Essex, we use Moodle, but I mean, um, that. that and this is a classic example of what you have. So lots of information, lots of material, lots of uh, ebook. So um, uh, all the textbook, all the assessment, all the slides of the lectures, everything is one place. That's where you get all the information, all the things you study. Um, that's where you get all the recording of the lectures, and that's where you upload most of the or most of the um, uh, ex exercise and assessment you do during the year. So what type of uh, teaching setting do you have in university? Usually, and that's usually quite standard in first and second year, you have about eight to 10 hours per week. And uh, this goes down in the final year because, uh, and I'm gonna explain you why in a second. And usually these hours are coupled with at least um, three to eight hours of uh, lab work uh, in year one and year two per week. Um, so putting everything together, including um, uh, non-lecture like tutorials, which are uh, small group teaching, you are looking at 16, uh, 18 hours of um, contact hour per week in year one and year two. In year three is quite different. As I say, the hours are lower. And this is because in year three, you're expected to do a real research project. So, and that's why being a research intensive university is important. What is a real, what is a research project? A research project basically means that you have a, an academic, which is gonna be your supervisor and you're gonna move in uh, the supervisor lab where you're gonna carry out a real research project. And that will, should take about two days a week. Um, you are meant to work in a lab about two days a week, one, one and a half a week for about three months. At the end of that, you're going to have to write a project report and that is going to be a big chunk of your final year. So as I said, your final year, uh, your third year is a very formative experience because on top of studying really specific subject, you also have this very strong research uh, experience that is quite important for, your, uh, for acquiring skills transferable skills that you're going to use when you finish university and you go to study a master or to work um, uh, in uh, outside of university. So the degree that we have at Essex uh, and I'm going to talk about today are uh, the Bachelor in Biochemistry, Biological Science, Genetics, Human Biology and Marine Biology, which are pretty much the big components of life sciences. So we cover pretty much all the aspects of life science. I'm not going to talk about biomedical sciences because there was already another talk a few weeks ago about biomedical science and biomedical science is quite different from the others because biomedical science is accredited by the IBMS, Institute of Biomedical Sciences, um, and there is a strong component of a strong link between studying biomedical science and NHS, which you don't have in the other degree. So um, it, it is slightly different. So I'm going to try to focus on these five degrees now. So I'm going to go in alphabetic order. So biochemistry, biological science, genetics, human biology, and marine biology. 
So in biochemistry, what do you study? Now, most of the focus when you study biochemistry is the study of um, the use of chemistry to study biological organism. And, um, and biochemistry is the classic subject uh, that you study um, um, a university uh, in life science. And what does biochemistry include? Well, you study a lot of enzymology and a lot of neurodegenerative disease. Um, most of the study of biochemistry is centered around the study of protein and functional protein within the organism. And what happens when the proteins start uh, stop working properly? Uh, why do we focus so much in protein? Protein are the uh, macromolecule inside our cell that carry out most of the jobs. Uh, so understanding how this protein works and not work is quite important to understand uh, the progress of diseases and the treatment of disease. For example, classic example is neurodegeneration, neurodegenerative disease. Neurodegenerative disease are caused because one protein in your body, for some kind of reason, which you don't fully understand, decide to behave in a different way from in its normal way. And that causes uh, precipitation and aggregation of this protein, and that is directly linked to development of neurodegenerative diseases. So there is a strong link with uh, proteins and enzymes and uh, diseases. So biochemistry is all focused on this study, on study of um, enzymes, protein, and drugs, and uh, all these chemical components that you can use to uh, regulate and um, modulate the protein in our body, and as a consequence, treat diseases. So what type of skills do we acquire when you study biochemistry? You study a lot of lab and practical skills. Uh, molecular biology, cell biology, and, biochemi and classic biochemical lab techniques. So that is the classic type of skill that you do have, you need to have uh, at the end of a biochemistry degree. Um, not surprisingly, you also are now nowadays expect to develop computational skills. Um, and this is, I believe, is one of those type of skills that pretty much every person studying um, life science has to acquire. It, it, the the, the mod society is evolving, science is evolving with society, and computers are nowadays a big component of science, and it's pretty much in, uh, impossible to, to, to specialize in life science without having a good um, computational skills. So uh, biological sciences are um, a very broad discipline. Uh, biological sciences as the name suggests, is the science of biological organism, which is a ginormous field of, uh, of study. So how do you study biology at university? How can you fit all this ginormous amount of knowledge in just three years? Realistically, that is not possible. So when you go to university and study biological science, you have to find um, um, a, a field within biology that you want to study. We call them pathways. Um, you can call them a branch of biological science. And usually um, the classic the classic branches of biological sciences are the more molecular aspects, so molecular and cell biology, the more synthetic biology oriented, so biotechnology, or the more ecology, animal oriented, so a, a pathway in ecology and conservation. So these are three different pathways. Again, when you study biological science, the, 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 the good important part of biological science is that the, flexi the flexibility to really uh, sample all the different aspects that are part of biological science. And, um, and as a consequence, you should really have this freedom to study all the different aspects. But as I said, that is a bit too wide and too unfocused. So when you study biological science, it's always advisable to, um, to, to choose a branch within the biological science. For example, I studied biological science at university, and uh, my, my three years were very uh, biotechnology and molecular biology oriented. And uh, my uh, master degree was all centered around molecular and cell biology. Uh, so coming from a personal experience of the person that did a bachelor degree in biological science, I can, ask, I can assure you that it's a fascinating subject. There's a lot to study. There's a lot of research still being carried out, um, but, but it's very wide. So it's always good to, um, to specialize, to choose a pathway um, when you study biological science. And at Essex, we have a degree in biological science, and we have created these three different pathways where we have grouped a set of modules which will make you more specialized in a certain subject like molecular and cell biology. The type of skill you develop are not too different from that one of, of genetics. Um, 
a, um, there's a lot of uh, computational part in which you study um, um, uh, software like R or big data analysis, but you also acquired at the same time lots of uh, laboratory skills, but also field skills. So it's, there's a bit of everything. Uh, genetics, as my name suggests, genetics is the subject that studies everything, um, uh, every living organism from a uh, hereditary material point of view. So genetics is most focused on molecular and cellular genetics, molecular biology, and all these knowledge about uh, the hereditary material that we have in our cell, but also all the knowledge about um, handling and modifying this material. So uh, genetics includes lots of information about molecular and cellular genetics, but also, also how to use this genetic information to understand evolution, but also um, ecologic, ecologic system and uh, uh, micro, for example, environments. Environments not only from um, plants' point of view or human point of view, but also from microbes' point of view. So it really includes everything which is connected to the study of hereditary material from the study itself, but also from using the hereditary material to understand um, the, the living organism around us. And as you can imagine, that includes two big components. The ability to extract these materials, so lots of cell, molecular cell uh, laboratory skills, but at the same time to analyze these data. This analysis can, as is done using machine, which are quite advanced machine, like a sequencing machine. This is uh, the next generation sequencing machine we have at Essex. And nowadays, these, uh, it, it's, it's fascinating. Now, this was a machine which has, was built um, about 10 years ago. And, and nowadays, um, you have sequencing machines which are uh, as big as a USB pen. Um, so um, you get quite a lot of training in extracting uh, radiation material from cell and living organism, and then you use the sequencing machine or portable or the big one to analyze this uh, um, radiation material and this uh, DNA and um, RNA. Uh, so um, uh, th th there's these very two very big components in genetics, and I would say that the computational part of genetics is probably the um, um, much bigger in genetics than it is in biological science or biochemistry or uh, marine biology. So in genetics, a computational part is, is a big part. Um, uh, guys, um, feel free to, um, to uh, interrupt me or to make any question if you have any question, okay? Because um, I realize I've, I've gone through almost almost half of, of, of my time. Um, yes, so hi everybody. So chat is open if you want to add any questions in there. Uh, Sarah can answer if you've got kind of specific questions about entry requirements and uh, what you need for the course. And Filippo, if you've got anything. If you have more questions, yeah. Or personal questions about actually studying on the course, etc. I just wanted to check, are you going to cover anything around um, societies? Uh, not by can, if you want. I was just wondering, just to, just to take a little break, whether um, thinking about there's lots of extracurriculum activities that students can do whilst they're at university. Um, what ones would you recommend they did that would kind of complement the degree? Um, um, so. Um, so there's, there's a lot of opportunities. So there are opportunities inside the university. So the university has a student union which organizes all the life of the students when they are in university. And they provide lots of different opportunities for the students. Um, these can be uh, anything from um, working at the student union, working in anything managed by the student union, but also uh, anything related more to support to other students. So mentoring and uh, other Re mentoring related jobs. If they want to acquire more scientific skills, then usually what I always advise my student is to do a summer placement uh, in between the second and the third year or the first year. The, you, the reason why I tend to, ex to advise my students to do it in the second year is that because they acquire the level of knowledge which is vast enough for them to become quite productive when they go in the lab and do a summer school. Or a summer uh, or a summer internship, um, they can do it in the, uh, the, between the first and the second year. 
I, I would strongly advise every student to do it between the second and third year. They cannot do it at the end of the third year because realistically at the end of the third year you graduate and you're not a student anymore. So this is definitely something that the student needs to plan earlier on. Uh, uh, the application uh, for these very competitive summers, uh, summer uh, internship uh, are very early on in the year. So just to give you an example, the Biochemical Society um, uh, has a summer placement um, there um, every year. Uh, it's a paid summer placement. So it's six way week research project with a salary um, for this six week. Uh, and the application um, starts in November. The uh, award date is usually uh, beginning of the spring, and the actual start of the summer placement is uh, mid June. So it, it's really a long time. So you really need to plan it carefully because all the application needs to be ready in November for a placement that you're going to start in some of the year after. So there's a lot of um, there's a lot of preparation, there's a lot of planning, there's a lot of thinking that needs to be done, but is really, really important. It really, really makes your CV very competitive. So I strongly advise all my students to do it for lots of different reasons. I, I'm also a member of the Biochemical Society, so I uh, I look at the application for these um, summer placement. Uh, so uh, you really see students that are, have, have enthusiasm for science yeah, have determination to do this summer placement because they want to have a career in science. Um, they are, uh, there's lots of different societies that offer them, Biochemical Society is one, um, the Chemical Society is another one. Um, there is a um, research centre in UK that offer them. For example, the National Synchrotron Facility in Oxford offer them. Uh, there are opportunity at uh, research institutes like uh, the Sainsbury Labs in Cambridge and in Norwich. Um, uh, the MRC offer them. So there's a really lot of opportunity and usually staff at university is there to help you to succeed. So if you have interest, always speak your, with member of staff. They will advise you, help you in the uh, application process. Okay. So yeah, um, um, this is usually what we advise. Um, we have, in Essex, we have a, a tutor system, so every student is assigned a tutor, which is a member of staff, which will be the reference point throughout of academic year. Usually, this type of information are given the student directly by the tutor, so it's all a package of information that students always have at the beginning of the first year. Um, okay, so there are the, two th the last two things I wanted to discuss, it's just the human biology degree. Very simple. It's biology only focusing on the human body. So it's all the biology of humans and human organs. And this is quite comprehensive because it's everything that goes from uh, gen genetics of humans, epigenetics of humans, uh, molecular and cell biology of human living organs, but also disease. And that's probably the most interesting part. So what happens when some of these aspects goes wrong and the disease forms? So disease mechanism and cancer biology, that everything included within the human biology. And the type of scales are exactly identical to biology because human biology is, is biology, is just focused on one type of organism. The last degree, which is slightly different, is marine biology. What is marine biology? Why do we have marine biology? Now, this sometimes is, is, is obvious, but when you stop and you think actually carefully about the sea and the water, our planet is for 70% made up of water. So the good chunk of our planet is water environment. So it's not too surprised that we have an entire subject focused on the study of the bigger part of our planet, marine biology. So marine biology is a very vast um, discipline that covers having re everything related to the study of environment, uh, water environment, but also about the biodiversity that you have in the uh, marine environment, uh, which is so different from uh, the land environment, but also ecology. And these include courses where you study how to explore, how to identify species in the sea, um, and uh, how to understand the ecology of these, of these environments. Um, and, um, and this is coupled with a field courses. So 
this is something I mentioned at the beginning. What, what is a field course? Students get um, uh, get a real hands-on experience to study um, this type of environment. So students will do diving exercise, will do specimen identification where they are uh, diving in the sea, and they're going to have to do survey techniques in the sea. And this is all related to understanding this environment, but also studying and conserving and preserving this environment. There's a lot of connection between marine biology and policies of respect of the sea. These field trips are probably one of the most formative experiences that you have to do in, in, uh, marine, when you study marine biology. And I can't really imagine having a degree in marine biology without having this very formative experience. Uh, field trips are different in different universities, and these are probably one of the most important things that we have at Essex, the field trip, the field trip package that we offer, which is, um, as I say, is unique. You don't find it in any other universities. In the first year, you have UK Marine, which uh, is a field trip at uh, in Cornwall, where students have a first hands-on experience in the sea type of um, training, but also there is a UK, um, uh, UK society, UK Marine Society, where students are uh, trained and they have the opportunity to a study and give talks. So this is quite quite formative package. In the second year is probably the most important because student goes to Indonesia and they spend three weeks in Indonesia doing uh, immersion um, and, uh, and the field trip training course. And this is really unique experience and students get the opportunity to do diving research and get uh, diving um, instruction. Uh, they spent, uh, basically they go in Indonesia in April and they come back uh, beginning of May. Um, once we're back uh, during the summer, they um, then do another field trip in UK uh, area, and that tends to be um, close to University of Essex. It's very close to the University of Essex. It's very close to the um, uh, to the sea, so the students simply go to the beach, which is like twenty minutes from the university, and they do a training and sample collection uh, there. And then at the very beginning of the third year, this is usually September, the students go to Greece and they do another type of uh, field trip, again, data collection and survey um, experience. And that is tends to be at the very beginning of the year because then the students in the third year have their uh, research project, so they, they need to be in university doing research project. And most of the time is data analysis based on the data and the samples that they collect in these different field trips. So it's very formative experience. And just to give you a flavor of what students do, I'm gonna show you a video that was filmed by one of our students doing uh, one of these um, field trip in Indonesia. Coral reefs are the tropical rainforests of the oceans. They are highly productive ecosystems, home to an incredible variety of marine organisms and of very high importance to coastal communities. As marine biology students from the University of Essex, we had the chance to experience coral reefs in the most biodiverse ecoregion of the world, putting our theoretical knowledge in practice while acquiring essential practical skills. The small island Hoga in Indonesia's Wakatobi Marine National Park was our home for 18 days. 18 days full of diving, snorkeling and many new experiences. We learned about various in-water research methods to understand how reef geomorphology, benthic structure, environmental conditions and living organisms interact. And during independent mini-projects, the new skills were put in practice right away. By addressing the coral reef ecology, Several questions were of interest. What is the feeding behavior of butterfly fish? And how far does structural complexity determine fish community? And which impact does light have on coral morphology? But we did not only learn about reef biology. By focusing on the social aspects of coral reef conservation and management, we had the opportunity to visit different local villages and talk to the communities. 
all of these communities live in very close proximity to each other, but they have very different cultural backgrounds and ways to make use of the marine resources. For most of the communities, fishing is the main source of income and of substantial importance. But some of the villages also rely on seaweed and other farming. So what does that mean for management and conservation in the Wakatomi? And how can these interests and needs of these communities be equally addressed? With so many questions asked, new things learned, impressions gained, and practical experience made, the field trip to Holga was the highlight during the time at the University of Essex. That was actually one of our students from um, two or three years ago that did all the video was actually, and we were very proud. Um, this is just uh, to, to finish, uh, I just wanted to, to, to highlight the, the independent research project where the students go in the lab and do actual research. And these, uh, there's lots of different opportunities and this is to go back to the very interdisciplinary environment that I was talking about, which is very important when you want to uh, acquire practical skills, ability to really sample all the different aspects of uh, techniques and, um, uh, and opportunities that you have in life science. And, and again, that is where being a research intensive university really helps the student to get these set of skills. Um, and, and these go from classical molecular biology to environmental ecology. Here you see one of our staff members helping a student to collect a sample on, this is actually a course not too far from university. And the, you see uh, one of, um, this is actually one of my students loading a agarose gel. So this is a, a gel that is loaded with DNA sample to do DNA separation and analysis. So these are all the type of skills that you acquire during your studies, but most importantly during your research project. Um, what do you do after you do university? Well, um, there's always this misconcept that the only job you can do is the job your lecturer do. No, there's a way more than that. There's way better than that. So you can definitely work as a um, lab technician, so lab um, um, scientist in an hospital, pharmaceutical industry, or anything connected to biotechnology industry. You can work in schools. There's lots of students that decide to do teaching uh, in schools or colleges. Um, uh, London especially is growing as an uh, editorial hub. Um, in King's Cross, the amount of publishing, scientific publishing companies is exploding. Um, uh, you can work anything related to sale and reps of um, uh, um, scientific product. You can work in government and policy um, and policy. Um, but obviously you can decide to study more, to specialize more, and you can decide to do a master degree or a PhD or to, grad or to do uh, graduate school in medicine or dentistry. Everything is accessible by doing one of the degree I showed you in uh, life sciences. Just to give you a flavor of the type of things our students do, I mean, we have a very high student satisfaction. So 94 of our students are happy with our course, and this is one of the reasons. So this is one of the things that are telling us not only that, they are telling that we are teaching and the students are happy with what they learn. But the second things where we are uh, looking at when we, um, we, we assess our, um, our teaching, our courses, is the employment. To see if our students are not only happy to what they study, but are also happy when they decide to move outside the university and look for a job of further study. And basically, 90% of our students are in employment of further studies. And as you can see, there is a bit of difference in what uh, in the percentage of our students that move to work or study, but roughly that is not, not, not such a difference. So you see that different degrees, you have different percentage. For example, by chemistry, 45% of students are in graduate jobs. Uh, while 40% are doing further study, which means master or PhD, and 15% are part-time studying. Biological science, the percentage is slightly different, but roughly you always find these two components of students working, doing graduate jobs, so jobs where a degree is, in the spend, is a minimal requirement to do that job, or studying. We don't have any data for human biology simply because human biology is a new degree. So we don't have any students which have graduated from human biology and start working. Human biology, the first graduate in human biology will be 
Vizia. So the first cohort of human biology graduates will, from Essex will be Vizia. Just to, again, just to highlight a, fair, a few information about what our students do or what you can do when you study life science, you can become a school teacher. You can become a computer software uh, engineer. Uh, for example, these students did marine biology and became a computer software in a graduate job in London. Because again, as I said, you acquire lots of computational skills to do the data analysis. And that level of computational skills is, um, is enough to get you in this type of job like computer software engineering. Um, but you can also work with local authorities. For example, these students, David, graduated from biological science, work at the um, uh, Colchester Council, uh, University of Essex in Colchester. Um, the more, uh, more specific type of job, for example, um, um, Ben graduated in marine biology and now works as a research officer in an, uh, a non-profit organization for the conservation of um, marine environments. Uh, which is a quite natural direction for students who study marine biology. Um, but you can also do research. For example, Sara, which studied marine biology, decided to do a PhD, so to, to pursue a career in research. Um, she had a fully funded PhD scholarship, and she decided to study coral reef and climate change, which is a very, a very um, popular type of subject nowadays. And her research project was based uh, was uh, based uh, in Indonesia. And uh, that was quite important work she was doing because ended up being part of the BBC One Planet um, uh, series. Um, um, biomedical scientists have slightly different job, uh, different, different um, career opportunities because they tend to uh, be more uh, hospital job oriented, and, as can, and we got a, a really high amount of students that move uh, to hospital. Right now, for example, I would say 90% of our students, are biomedical science students, are directly involved with uh, volunteering to do a vaccination center for COVID um, in Essex. And with this, I would like, um, uh, this was probably one of our most successful students, uh, Chantal, which funded a company which is called Sirona, uh, which uh, creates um, uh, home testing for uh, gynecolic, gy well, I'm never going to be able to pronounce this word, gynecological and endometrial uh, cancer. Um, okay, I'm, I'm conscious about the time, so I would probably like to close here and um, and uh, answer any question you may have. Uh, any type of question, question about life science, studying life science, or more technical question about uh, coming to study Essex, which uh, probably Sarah is. The, the... Um, a, a question that often gets asked is, um, so for example, after biomedical science and you want to go to work for the NHS, um, do you have to do, uh, is it accredited by the, is it the HCP or yeah. do you have to go via so, a scientist uh, placement? Uh, so basically there's two different things. So there, there was a talk for biomed, but the reason why I didn't spend too much because um, there was a talk specific on biomed because we can spend like two hours just talking about that. So yes, our, our biomedical science degree is accredited by the IBMS. So all biomedical students are accredited. To have the HSBC um, portfolio, that requires an extra step, which is the applied biomedical science degree, which is a four-year degree where the students do the one-year placement in the NHS. After that, they come back to university and staff at university will help the students to put together the portfolio to apply for HSBC accreditation as well. But yes, what you need to work in the NHS environment is the IBMS accreditation. And yes, all our students get an IBMS accredited degree. Uh, we have a question about um, any information about zoology degrees. Oh, okay. Zoology degree is mostly related to uh, evolution of, of animals, to anything related to evolution of living organisms, anything related to the evolution of the organs of living organisms. There's a subject called um, compared anatomy. Um, um, so uh, it, uh, it, it, oh, you study the phil phylogeny of organisms, and um, it's mostly focused on uh, animals. Um, 
so well you study all living organism till human you don't really study human um we don't have a zoology degree at six uh the um um there's um the the most classic type of university of alfred zoology degree are uh, bristol oxford we have very big zoology department um so um what i told you about marine biology so think about that but studying every animal every, every animal of the planet basically instead of just focusing on the water i've just put a link in the chat as well using the ucas uh, course finder which has a link to all the uk universities which offer zoology yeah uh, but since I, I've been there myself, when I when I started doing zoology, when I was studying biological science, and I thought, oh, zoology, that's going to be fun. I'm going to study um, the behavior of animals, uh, the uh, the stuff that you usually watch when you when you, that you that you see when you do like BBC One or BBC what is called Blue Planet. That that is the stuff. No, guys, that, that's not zoology. Zoology is ninety percent phylogeny, uh, um, evolutionary tree, evolutionary link, the way the animal evolve and uh, ecosystem and environments. Um, um, Thank you very much. You're welcome. So I, I hope everybody found that useful. And um, can I just add another link into the chat, please? Yep, so um, if you've got any questions about um, studying at um, any of these subjects that we've covered today or studying at Essex, um, there's actually a link there where you can actually go and speak to our students and you can filter them down by their area of study. So we've got students in there from our life sciences degrees. Um, you've also got staff you can speak to. Yeah. So feel free to um, uh, to awesome. type in a question if there's you think of something later on as well you can access this whenever so we're here to take your your questions perfect thank you very very much thank you so everybody don't forget your other sessions this afternoon and check your diary for which ones you're booked into